Hi, my name is Nicole Austin. I am a previous Mrs. South Africa, a communication specialist and presenter. And I'm here today to speak to the title holders and management of Mrs. South Africa about some frequently asked questions about the journey. I have Joni, the CEO of Mrs. South Africa here with me today. Joni, Mrs. South Africa has become synonymous with a woman empowerment program. Tell us why that is. Nicole, yes, I think over the years it's gained the reputation of a women empowerment program and um, it is incredible to see how the women that come through the program every year really get transformed in many ways, not just physically but how they grow from a personal growth point of view and um, we focus a lot on upskilling them in various ways. It's also been referred to as the MBA of life and I think it's a year that a woman just takes back her power and um, it's just been incredible to see how the ladies grow on this journey. Well, I can certainly attest to that and it was a catalyst for a lot of change in my life and a lot of growth. Um, but it's also a business and I learned a lot of fundamental business um, in the process. Can you tell us how the Mrs. South Africa business itself is structured and run? Nicole, I think there's a misconception in the industry that pageants are run as non-profit organizations. And I think it's important to get the message out there that a pageant is also a business. In the case of Mrs. South Africa, we are a privately owned company that's got a uh, staff um, of full-time employees that do this for a living. This is their jobs. We do this every day of our lives. It's not just one event and then it's over. And, um, you know, we have over rates and running costs like any other business. And tell us about how your business has weathered the storm of COVID-19. How did this and lockdown affect your business? I'm not going to lie, it hasn't been an easy year. Um, being in the entertainment and event industry, we were hit really, really hard financially. Um, we derive our income as a business from sponsorships and events and not being able to host events, we were really, really uh, hit very hard. But at the end of the day, we survived. Um, it was a magical year in many ways as well. And it was incredible to see how the women had really come together and kept the platform of women empowerment alive. Well, that's incredible, pivoting in a uh, really critical time. Thank you, Joni. Next up, we have the Chief Operations Officer of Mrs. South Africa, Marlene. Marlene, COO of Mrs. South Africa, tell us what is your role? Well, my role is multifaceted. It oversees the operations, but over and above that, I also take care of the events from start to finish, as well as the ladies from the time they enter to the time we crown. So there's a lot, but I love what I do. Well, that's exactly what I want to find out. What is that journey and what is the operational process that you take care of from start to finish? Well, it is incredible, Nicole. I think from the time the ladies enter to the time they actually end the program with us, whatever the result may be, I see a massive transformation in them and it's significant and I love watching that. But from an operational point of view, there's a few specific things that they have to do as contestants. The first being sponsorship and getting sponsorship in. And we do equip them with the tools and the skills to do this, like a sponsorship proposal. So at various stages of the competition, they will bring in X amount of sponsorship. The second thing that they do is that they do uh, ticket sales for the events that we're hosting um, in our calendar and that is purely then to support the income towards the operations of the business as well. And I think lastly one of their main tasks is to assist with Women for Women, our NPO, and raising awareness for that. Our semi-finalists are really focused on raising awareness, but when they become finalists, they really do become more involved on the fundraising side of things. And they would host an indiv individual fundraiser for Women for Women as well. The proceeds of those fundraisers do go directly to Women for Women after we've covered our operational costs as Mr. South Africa. So certainly all of these responsibilities in the journey of the contestants themselves is actually growing their own skills in terms of event management, um, engaging with sponsors and being able to generate interest in what they're doing, um, which is all skills that they're benefiting out of the program. And tell us, I see it's something on your yes. lap. That is an <laughs> operations manual, am I right? Yes, that's right. So this is our operations manual. We've spent a lot of years actually perfecting this and it's really meant to be the guidebook for the contestants through their journey from the time they enter 
and really supposed to just help them and guide them about how to do things, how to do social media, how to do branding, who to contact for an invoice, what the events will look like. So we put together this quite comprehensive guide for them and the first workshop we have with them, we give it to them so that at the very start, we're very transparent about what they need to do and how they will do it. It also outlines then the very important judging process which they will be involved in as well. So this could be called the MBA of Life course material. Definitely, I think I've been, I've heard it being referred to that. You mentioned the judging process. Can you take us through that briefly? Sure, I think everybody's keen to understand how that works. It is something we are very transparent about. There are two judging processes during uh, the competition, one at a semi-final stage and one at a final stage. Both we outline very clearly in the operations manual and we take the ladies through it as well in various workshops. It is independent, completely independent and run by independent auditors outside of the management team. And just to give you an example, the finals that we just had, that consisted of many different elements, one of being uh, which the presentation that the ladies had to do, then they had to do swimwear judging and the majority of their score came from their interviews and lastly their performance on stage. So those are the elements that made up the finals judging that just took place. Thank you Marlene. Now we get to chat to or where to a previous second princess about her journey. Oweto, it's great to have you here. Tell us about your Mrs. South Africa journey. Wow, it feels like it was just the other day. Uh, I started, when, in fact, I made the decision to enter in 2018, and that's when um, my baby was one year old, and I felt like I'd done everything that I could for my family, my career, and I just needed to do something for Oweto. And that's why I entered the pageant. I was just trying to rediscover myself and what a journey it was. Uh, I remember walking into Empress Palace for um, casting. There were so many gorgeous women there and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, how do I fit into this whole picture? Um, but I walked in and I had fun. And I think from that start, from that very first day, I was so intentional about just finding Oretu and being the very best version of her the entire time. And I think when I walked that stage on finale, I had so much fun. I was just like, this is me. <laughs> this is me. This is why I came here. This is who I found. It was an incredible journey. I made incredible friends, uh, incredible network networking opportunities. Um, and I'm better for it. Well, you can certainly see that growth, you know, through you. But when you originally joined the program, you were a powerhouse of a woman to start with. And I think certainly the program elevates your self-confidence and helps you realize your full potential. No, definitely. I mean, I come from a corporate background, so marketing and branding, that's what I did professionally. Uh, but through the Mr. South Africa program, I then discovered that I actually want to be in the public eye. I want to do broadcasting, I want to do radio, I want to do TV, I want to speak publicly. I want to use my voice literally uh, to speak up and empower women and to be of impact. And now I, I was able to do that through this platform. I've met so many incredible people. Uh, I've just signed a radio contract. Um, it's just been incredible. And I wouldn't have been able to do all of those things without holding the mirror to myself and having to see myself and that was only possible through Mrs. South Africa. Well, how tough was that, holding that mirror up? How oh. tough was it going through that journey and putting <laughs> in the work? Nicole, you know, literally, when you hear people say you have to put blinkers on, right? Because if you don't, then you're distracted by everybody else. So if you're comparing yourself to every other girl, then that's not the right thing to do. You're not doing it correctly. You have to hold the mirror to yourself, see your flaws, recognize them, learn from them, and grow from them. Um, I think the attitude for me was just be grateful. Be grateful for this platform um, and also make an Im impact. You know, you're standing up for a black girl child coming from the Eastern Cape. Be an example for her. Be exemplary, always. And I think uh, holding that mirror to my face was very difficult, but it was very much worth it. So would you say that there is a link then between the type of person who wants to enter Mrs. South Africa, a potential contestant, and the amount of gratitude and certainly their motives. Definitely. So I didn't enter with the crown in mind, I entered with all the way to in mind. I always say 
It's the why and the how you finish. So the how you finish for me was important. I needed to find Oroeto and be grateful for the journey along the way. So if you don't have a heart of gratitude, you don't have the heart that it requires for you to lose gracefully, to win impactfully, then you shouldn't be on this journey. Uh, it's, it's hard work. It's lots of introspection, uh, very satisfying at the end. But if you're only doing it for the crown, then it's not worth it. Perfectly said from the powerhouse herself, who has also recently been on the other side of the judging panel, one of the recent judges for the latest Mrs. South Africa crowning. Tell us about that experience. So completely different experience, and I must say quite a difficult one. Nicole, I think having been a contestant yourself and a judge, you understand that sitting on the other side and seeing those ladies put their hearts out on the stage, literally bear it all out, even through interviewing. It's your heart you want to empathize, and I think it's so important, and I appreciate the fact that we, we are given a limit on how low we can score an individual, because you have to recognize the fact that every single person that walked that stage showed up. They put in the effort, they put in the work throughout the year, and they were there fully. So we can't score below a certain point, which I really appreciated. Um, the decimal points, that's how scoring tight. You have to be so clear and specific in the type of winner that you have in mind that you don't have a bias against the other girls. So you're scoring within a boundary and if you're scoring 16.7.1 <laughs> then you know how tight it is. Um, because this year was the longest year. It was a 15 month race to the finish, right? So those ladies were so invested in, the, in that entire process. Um, I was crying at some point in the judging throughout the interview. I had, we had to take a break because, because to see their lives impacted like that was really, really moving. And to understand that there could only be three at the end and one at the very, very end was heartbreaking. Um, but the process was fair, and that's all that we can say. Uh, auditors were right behind us the whole time. Um, <laughs> the head auditor just kept saying, remember to do a decimal point, we're not rescoring. <laughs> I think their job must be the toughest of all. Um, but emotionally, certainly for you guys, very yeah. tough indeed. And especially uh, you being so recently self-invested. Yeah. So thank you for your contribution to Mrs. South Africa. No, definitely. Um, I think Uma Tapa did a, a post a few, a few weeks ago where she was just um, reaffirming the integrity of the judging process and just stating that, you know, finalists looking in think they can be referee and be the players on the field, but you can't do both. That's why an independent judging panel is appointed and is audited and there's proper governance structures, there's checks and balances, um, so it has to be completely independent. And because you don't have the objectivity to, to be a player and a referee, you have to trust the judging process. Uh, and I'm very honored to have been part of both sides. And I'm super, super excited about our queen. I think Gotenji is absolutely perfect for the role. She's earned it, she's graceful, she's a powerhouse. She's going to be of impact. Absolutely, and uh, you know, I think it goes back to somebody's motives mm. when they enter. Mm. Is the motive the crown or is the motive the growth? Exactly. And that growth is so satisfying despite uh, all the challenges you encounter along the way. To all of those women who didn't get the crown mm. and who would walk away from this process, what would your words of encouragement be? So there's a saying that goes, sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. I'd like to add to that, sometimes you grow. So the winning isn't in the crown, the winning is in the process, it's in the journey, it's in the refining. The winning is in finding you. So if you didn't get the crown, you won because you found you. And if you're true to that, then this whole journey was absolutely worth it. Truer words have never been spoken. We now get to speak to a previous queen, Jacqueline Ferns. Jacqueline. As the longest reigning Mrs. South Africa during a global pandemic, we just want to know how did you do it? Yeah, I think every time somebody asks me that question, um, 
it's, it's a profound question to me because it just showcases how strong the sisterhood is. I could have never done it without you, without Matapa, without the whole support of the Mr. South Africa team, without my previous um, finalists and sisters. Um, you know, there's this one saying that a man is not an island and I truly capitalized on that. I'm not an island and I just pulled from every single part that I can, you know, that's inside the whole Mr. South Africa organization. Um, it was a wonderful journey and I think I just built such strong relationships with everyone during the journey and because it was so long, you know, it's exhausting. So you, you need you know your sister's help you need the support of other women and yeah it's 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 a very profound question and statement well it's a very profound journey and you certainly added a significant amount of value to mrs south africa and to women for women being the first mrs south africa to also win the title of mrs charity tell us a little bit about the women for women organization and your work with them wow the women for women organization is a wonderful organization and i firstly I wanted to, I knew what I wanted to give back to Women for Women when I went into, you know, Mr. South Africa. I've been working with Women for Women prior to becoming a finalist um, as I owned an ACE Models. And each and every year we have this program for young ladies, for disadvantaged young ladies within the communities. And um, where we teach them life skills and things that your mum is supposed to teach you or your grandma teaches you, they don't get taught these things. So Women for Women put uh, this package together and it's the most amazing package of life skills. It's like this crash course in life skills. Um, and I saw the difference it made in these girls' lives. I mean, because of that course, we got two girls accepted into universities that got the worst grades at school, but they just started knowing who they are. They, they knew their worth, what they wanted to do with their lives. They know that their life is worth living and their dreams are worthy. They are worthy of dreaming big. And Women for Women just helped them and contributed so much towards my organization with these young girls. And, you know, so I knew what I wanted to give back to Women for Women, never thinking that I would win Mrs. Charity as well. But I just had this amount that I wanted to give to them so that we can further educate the young girls throughout South Africa. And Wow, I can, I wish everybody knew what they do for the young girls in this country and you know, I always just think imagine if we can implement this program in each and every settlement throughout South Africa. Imagine the difference we can make if a woman just knows her worth from a young age, if a girl knows her worth, you know, but break down stereotypes like gender-based violence you know we, those things won't exist because she would know when to walk away she would know she's worthy and she would not stand for things like that um so to me they really did so much and i mean throughout lockdown as well they contributed um quite a large amount to you know the feeding the feeding scheme that we had um in limpopo so yeah women for women really has been there through every aspect of my journey and i just thank them for that well, we thank you for your 15-month contribution <laughs> and uh, I, it's really great and refreshing to hear that it is not a journey about a crown no. and I think that that is probably the biggest misconception, correct? It is. I think if you enter wanting to win the crown, you're entering with the wrong perspective. You have to enter because you want to empower. And if you enter with the right perception of that you are entering to empower young women or entering to empower women your age, then enter Mrs. South Africa. But if you enter to become Mrs. South Africa or to want to be famous, like they say, then don't enter because you're not going to enjoy the journey because you will change. You will be pushed out of your comfort zone. I mean, you know, you do things that you never even thought possible. I think the evolution of who you are into who you become throughout this journey, it's something incredible. And I see it in each and every year, I can see it in the woman. You know, you see this woman, she's entering now, and then you know within 10 months, she's gonna be completely different. I literally get goosebumps Me if I too. talk about it. <laughs> I um, see a, a really big self-awareness and also an awareness of how you can add value yes. to other people's lives. Especially, yeah, and especially through women for women as well. Um, you know, if, 
me being now Mrs. Charity as well, I really saw the change that affected me through working with these young ladies. You know, you're always, you go in with the mindset that you want to make change and you want to be the change. At the end of the day, I was the one that was changed. My eyes were opened to what truly the significant problem that we currently have in South Africa amongst our women and amongst our girls. And um, that changed me, it changed my perspective and it just kind of fuels your fire to want to do more. So Jacqueline, tell us, what would your words of advice to new contestants be? Enter with the heart to serve and be authentically you. Just be you. You know, um, now being a judge as well, I saw the other part of Mrs. South Africa and how I think it's 10 times more stressful as a judge <laughs> than, you know, being judged. Um, but the woman that comes in there, that's authentically who they are, that brings authenticity with them, those are the one that, ones that you just go, you're like, wow, what an amazing story, what an amazing journey. So enter, your life will be changed forever. It will catapult you into a whole new level of life. It will empower you and it will evolve you into the woman you're supposed to be. But be authentic and enter to serve. Because if you can serve, you've won. Powerful words from a truly powerful woman. Jacqueline, we thank you for your time and uh, we cannot wait to see where you go to next. Next up, we will be interviewing an official mentor, my previous mentor in the Mrs. South Africa program and a second princess herself, Kathy Heaton. Kathy Heaton, this is a very personal conversation, certainly for me. I watched your journey. You've been involved with this pageant for over seven years and your journey is what motivated me to enter. You became my personal mentor through my journey and now you are one of the official mentors mentoring hundreds of women through this beautiful process. Tell us about your journey. Well, I became a mentor in 2015 after my year in the Miss South Africa where I placed second runner up. I wanted to be the person that I needed during that journey. I felt that I was a very capable woman. I was a business person. I, was a, I had won awards in my business. I was very capable, very driven, very competitive. But there were aspects of the competition that I did had, I had no idea how to tackle. And I felt that I was in this great big ocean and I was scrambling for a lifeboat. So I wanted to be that for the women going forward. And I developed the mentorship program to support women, to hold their hand through the journey and to make them realize that in these tasks that you are given in the Miss South Africa, they're not there to make you fail. They're there to challenge you, there to step out of that comfort zone that we always talk about, but to really grow through this journey. And it's been one of the biggest privileges of my life to work with hundreds of women every single year and impact them in a positive way. Well, certainly talking about working with women and being a contestant yourself, you've seen and put in the blood, the sweat and the tears. Um, tell us a bit more about that. Oh, absolutely. You know, it is a, an enormous journey to go on. It is a journey not only of growth, but a journey of um, you know, physical transformation, mental transformation, spiritual transformation. People don't realize that. They look at it and they say it's a pageant. It's all about the beauty and it really isn't. It's about how you are going to be empowered. How are you going to change your life? Because this is career changing, life changing, um, self-esteem boosting this journey. And, and I really, I always go back to what Joni Johnson's vision is for the Mr. South Africa, and that is not to find a Mrs. South Africa every year. It's to empower hundreds of women from all over South Africa, from all walks of life. And the Mrs. South Africa truly do embrace all married women of South Africa. And it is such a beautiful process and it is worth putting that effort in. If you don't put the effort in to do well in the competition, you don't get the, the full growth from it or the full experience, the benefit of the experience. So I always say that I don't mentor to make you win Mrs. South Africa. I mean, I'm very competitive and you know, I want you to win Mrs. South Africa when I mentor, but I mentor beyond the crown. 
I mentor so that you can build your own personal brand. That you, if you want to change your career, let's leverage this platform. Let's change it. Change your career through this journey. If you want to grow um, just emotionally, let's use this platform to do that. It's almost like life coaching come Mr. South Africa, you know? So it's, it really is wonderful. Yeah, I love it so much. And I think that leads me to the next question. Is anybody looking at this, thinking, I would love to enter Mrs. South Africa? Um, what would your words of advice or encouragement be to those women? Do it. Just stop what you are doing and learn about it, read up about it, um, follow other contestants, look at their journeys, experience the journey with the contestants from this year and see their enormous growth and know that that is what is potentially in front of you and do it because you cannot regret this journey. The only time you will regret this journey is if you do not work, you do not use it to its full potential and you, you only focus on winning the crown. Tell me, Kathy, how do you manage somebody's expectations and their disappointment? That is really the hardest aspect of mentorship, to be honest. And the hardest aspect, I think, in the Mrs. South Africa is that every single woman feels worthy of winning the title, and rightfully so. Rightfully so, because every woman is worthy. But at the end of the day, there can only be one winner. And so I tell my ladies, if you have sucked the marrow out of this journey, if you have used every opportunity and leveraged this platform, you cannot walk off that stage not feeling like a winner, not being the best version of yourself. When I walked off the stage, I didn't have the Mrs. South Africa crown on my head, but I was a winner. To every single person who supported my journey, who followed my journey, I was their Mrs. South Africa. I was their inspiration. And I supported our Mrs. South Africa. I got behind our queen and I do every single year because that is what sisterhood's about. It's about supporting someone when they do well. It's not about looking at another beautiful woman and saying, I can't appreciate her beauty. It makes me less beautiful to appreciate her beauty. That's nonsense. A beautiful woman can recognize beauty in another woman, can recognize her strength, can recognize her, her abilities, and know that she too has that. It doesn't diminish that. So if you can walk away with that attitude, you've not lost. You've only but grown. And I think that is, I always tell my ladies that to try and manage that expectation. Focus on what you've achieved through this process and you will be amazed at your own growth and you will feel like a winner yourself. Kathy, do you think that it's a sense of maturity that develops through the competition? That you're there to learn, to grow, to give, and perhaps that maturity even continues to develop once you walk off the stage without a crown? Most certainly. You know, I think especially if you're a mother, I always say to the ladies, be cognizant of who's watching you because this is a teachable experience, a teachable moment for you as a mother to teach your children how to handle a disappointment, how to be gracious when things don't go your way. And it's the same with a winner, being humble in your victory. You know, so that is also a teachable moment for people who are watching you, not just your own children, but your husband. How does he perceive, you know, this journey that you've been on and how will you behave afterwards? What good did you take from the journey? And certainly that maturity even translates into taking really tough advice from a mentor. I know those moments when I sat there and the self-awareness it took to sit there and assess myself in the mirror and say, okay, I don't like a few things and want to change them. But isn't that a healthy thing in life? It is a very healthy thing and I have had to learn how to do that because I do not take criticism well. And I recognize that in you, um, <laughs> is that it's hard to take criticism. So when you know, we would sit down and I would say, you needed to look at yourself in X, Y, and Z or change this um, aspect or maybe not take something so personally. Um, you really, you had to process that and, and I'm exactly the same. So I recognize that. And so I do give advice in a gentle way, but in a firm way, if I see someone is, you know, going onto the wrong path and, um, and I think it's so important and it really does show maturity that you can go away and assess it and I, I've been absolutely amazed by your growth and just the fact that you've taught me so much 
in the last couple of years after your win, just how you've handled yourself and, and like we say, criticism from others, from the public and not taking it personally and just using it almost as a springboard to better yourself. And um, wow. it, that is, it's hard Thank to you. give people criticism, but you know, when you see them shine afterwards, it's so amazing, really. I think that was one of the greatest skills that I learned in the process was it's not just about, um, it's not always about winning in life. Life is actually about how you handle and process failure. And that was one of the, the greatest uh, lessons that I walked away with, is even in my victory as Mrs. South Africa, I had multiple failures in my life that surrounded that. And the victim story never works. It's never, uh, uh, it never gains traction, it never gains appreciation, and it never does any good. The only way to do good is to take the circumstances that you're dealt and transform them into your own success. You know, I, I never like to think of things as failure, experiences as failure. You know, when I walked off that stage, I wasn't Mrs. South Africa. I'd come second runner up and that was great. You know, out of the whole of South Africa, it was amazing. But yes, I was disappointed that I didn't win Mrs. South Africa. I can't pretend I wasn't. But it wasn't a failure to me. I had done the best I could do in that circumstance and I was proud of myself for that. And I think if every person can see that it is a learning experience, what can I learn from this? What did I gain from this? Then you can't possibly have failed. So even in those moments where you feel like, oh, I failed, rather turn the, change the narrative to, what did I learn? What did I gain? Because there's always something to be gained. You never finish the Mrs. South Africa process and walk away and say, I have no learned nothing, this was for nothing. Then you've completely missed the point. And that is very sad and that is unfortunately on that person. Um, you have to look at how have you, has your brand grown? Has your business grown? Have you given exposure to your business? Has it grown to yourself? Have you changed your career? How do your friends and family see you? But more importantly, how do I see myself? Because you have improved. You are the best version of yourself. You have put in the work. Physically, mentally, spiritually, you've put in the work. So you cannot possibly walk away feeling like you, are, you haven't grown. Kathy Heaton, this has been enlightening and put me right back in the mentor, mentorship chair. And we're incredibly grateful for you. Thank you. Next up, we speak to the brand new reigning queen herself. Our brand new Mrs. South Africa. The glitter fell from the sky, the crowd went wild. Welcome, Tenji Mbluni. Thank you, thank you, Nicole. Talking about that glitter moment, how did it feel when your name was called on that night? You know, there's only two moments in my life that have made me feel that way. When I got married and when both of my children were born. And just you, just describing it like that puts me back in that moment. I'm getting chills. It's so surreal. And you know that your life is just never going to be normal again. And it hasn't. It hasn't been normal. Well, Tenji, we want to know you. And South Africa is already falling in love with you. Um, we want to know what is your story? Who are you? And where do you want to go with this Mrs. South Africa title? Oh, well, first and foremost, I am a loving mother, dedicated wife, ambitious businesswoman, but I'm just someone who just decided to make the difficult choice of stepping up and living a life of purpose and meaning. And it hasn't always been easy. Um, but then, as soon as I made that decision, like life has changed, this hasn't gone the same. And growing up, I grew up in a township where a lot of things, it was exciting growing up there, but a lot of things felt really wrong for me. For example, everyone had heart disease, hypertension. It was a normal thing to get diabetes. And I, I thought, you know what, it's not always about resources because I didn't have the best resources. It's sometimes about knowledge. So as soon as I was growing, I knew that was a cause that I'd always champion for. Because it's not, it's a human right, you know. Nutrition and wellness has become a luxury, which I don't think is right at all. That's incredible to hear. And myself as a pharmacist, I think that there's a lot of areas that need to have a light shone on. Mm -hmm. And those certainly are very topical areas. Where do you want to go from here with this crown? Um, oh, the dream is so big. But I think when I got into the journey, I said, I'm not going to limit myself anymore. So I'm going to just shoot for the stars. I'd love to, I'd love to plant a garden in every school in the township. Wow. And 
honestly, it's not just about the health and nutrition to start the conversation, but to also get the community self-sufficient. So I know it might not be possible, but that's fine. I think I just want to get a movement going and then have it pick up momentum from there. And that's what I want to be my legacy. Well, that's incredible. And I think already you've started a legacy of authenticity. And tell me, how important is this as a concept to you? I actually didn't even, I didn't even think it was something that I could think about, but I love how the Mrs. SA has embraced me for who I am because I've never tried to be anything else. And that shows that you can be who you are because I've always championed for being unique. Everyone has a unique special talent. And we don't and social media makes us clone each other and want to be a certain person. But we all have this special message to share and if everyone hones in on that and just shares that and then that's what the world needs right now. You couldn't have said it better, hit the nail on the head in the most authentic way. Tenji, thank you for your time and all the best on your beautiful journey ahead. To wrap up this chat, we get some final words with the CEO of Mrs. South Africa, Joni. Well, it's certainly a business that is also imparting business skills to women and encouraging them to be more business minded. So, for future contestants, any woman out there who are thinking about entering, would you have any words of advice for them? I think it is important to realise that it is going to be tough, it is hard work, it's not always going to be easy like anything else in life, but at the end of the day, that's what pushes you out of your comfort zone, that's when the growth happens and that's where you find the magic and I can guarantee you that you are never going to be the same after this year. Well, there you have it from the CEO herself and her formidable team of women who are encouraging a sentiment of business-minded empowerment. And uh, it is something truly remarkable, especially considering the times we have just been through. Thank you to Mrs. South Africa.